It's nearly midnight, and Sergeant Sean Reed is on his way to a call in Bethany, Oklahoma, a suburb of Oklahoma City. While driving, he spots something odd at the Sunshine Car Wash. A white Dodge Neon was parked in the far west stall, but no one was around it. I didn't pay much more attention. After finishing the call, I drove by the uh, Sunshine Car Wash again. And that same white Dodge Neon was still on the far west stall. Now the Dodge Neon is the only vehicle left at the car wash. I sent the license plate number to a headquarters. The car is registered to 19-year-old Tiffany Johnston. Reed finds Tiffany's keys and purse in the car. In the glove box, he discovers the phone number for Tiffany's mother, Kathy, who lives 60 miles away in Anadarko, Oklahoma. I received a call from the Bethany Police Department wanting to know if Tiffany was with me. I told them no, she was supposed to meet her new husband, Ryan. They were going to go to their little club type disco place that they always go to at 11 o'clock at night because that was when Ryan got off work. You get woke up in the middle of the night wanting to know if your daughter's there, but you know something's not right. There's no sign of Tiffany anywhere, but with one call to Oklahoma State Police, everything changes. Around I-40 and Gregory Road, locals noticed a spot in the grass, and that draw their attention to it. They stopped and found a, a body of a white female Agents took a picture of the body, showed it to Ryan, and Ryan identified Tiffany. That car wash is fairly busy. If somebody would have tried to have abducted Tiffany, there would have been one hell of a fight. But the scene where her car was at didn't show that. Uh, the car was unlocked. Nothing around that scene was disturbed that that led you to believe that there was any altercation there. So the, the struggle that took place didn't take place there. It took place in a, at another stall or she knew the person and just got in the car with them and talked to them. It's a case where anyone could be the suspect. A medical examiner collects swabs for forensic testing, but the results are inconclusive. So in this case, we had a dead wife. Uh, now we have a living husband, and oftentimes uh, the husband is responsible for the death of the wife. The medical examiner wasn't able to determine the exact time of death. The last time she was seen alive there at the car wash was um, uh, shortly after 6 o'clock. And several co-workers saw Ryan Johnston work. He had a solid alibi that uh, he was at work from 3 to 11. The owner of the car wash called headquarters with a tip. He had seen news reports of a gentleman that was arrested on an abduction in Texas. He recognized that individual as a customer of his car wash. William Reese at one time resided in the Anadarko, Oklahoma area. He was convicted of two sexual crimes committed here in Cleveland County, and he was released in 1996. Two months prior to Tiffany's murder in 1997, he was involved in the abduction of Sandra Saypaw. Sandra Saypaw was 19 years old, and she was pregnant. She was parked at a Waffle House and noticed that her tires had been slashed. And Reese, pretending to be a good Samaritan, hopped up and said, hey, I can help you with that. Do you need a ride? And at knife point, put her into his truck and kidnapped her. They're driving down the interstate, I-45 in Houston. She noticed the back 
door is unlocked and she's able to kick out the back door, jump out of the moving vehicle on the interstate, roll away and, and escape. Sandra was kidnapped in Texas two months before Tiffany's murder. She wasn't able to ID Reese as her abductor until three months after Tiffany was killed. The owner of the car wash said he had seen Reese at the car wash several times, had tried to uh, uh, start conversation with him, and that Reese typically drove a white uh, Dooley pickup truck. Agents discovered that Reese had uh, used a payphone in the town of Yukon, which is a little bit further west than Bethany. We have William Reese in the area now, but we don't have him at the car wash at the time of Tiffany's disappearance. There was just no physical evidence. There was no eyewitness. There was nothing to corroborate that he was at the Sunshine Car Wash at that particular time. I'd call the Bethany PD and harass them, but they really had ran out of leads, and they didn't know what to do. So Tiffany's case was thrown back in cold case files. I received a laboratory report from the Kremlis. A couple of the swabs that were taken by the medical examiner contained a partial male DNA profile. Swabs taken during the autopsy, finally, after 16 years, give detectives a partial DNA profile of the killer. The swabs also show that Tiffany was sexually assaulted. The challenge with cold cases is that over time, the DNA evidence has broken down or degraded. So based on the portion of the swab remaining, we were able to obtain a partial DNA profile. And that is not enough information to enter that profile into the DNA database known as CODIS, the Combined DNA Index System. We went back and re-identified, located, and uh, obtained buckle swabs from people who Tiffany worked with. Many of the ex-boyfriends, acquaintances, even people who were at the car wash at the time that she was there. We went as far as Ryan Johnston himself. Even though he had a solid alibi and he cleared the polygraph, we still took a buckle swab from him to compare. But all of the male DNA profiles that were submitted from the people of interest at the crime scene and the husband, they were all excluded from the partial profile of the rectal swab. But William Reese, who the car wash owner identified and who was a very strong person of interest in the case, was the only person that hadn't been eliminated. In addition to the attempted abduction of Sandra Sapaw in May 1997, Reese was a suspect in a string of missing person cases that occurred within weeks of Tiffany Johnston's murder. The quest to solve Tiffany Johnston's cold case might have led investigators to a serial killer. Uh, we reached out to the, the Texas Rangers to obtain a buckle swab. And if I'm a betting man, I bet William Reese is going to be the contributor of it. State investigators compare Reese's DNA to what was found at the crime scene. It's a partial match. William Reese and all of his paternal male relatives could not be excluded from the partial profile of the rectal swab, which means that William Reese or any one of his male relatives could have contributed to that profile. Even though it's not a perfect match, it is progress. Investigators need time to build their case against Reese. And for once, time is on their side. Reese is locked away, serving a 60-year sentence in Texas for kidnapping Sandra Sapa. We were fairly confident that uh, William Reese was the killer, but we needed to get the confession from him. The Texas Rangers tell Reese they won't ask for the death penalty if he cooperates in their open cases. William Reese reaches a point that he confessed to those other missing person cases in Texas. And when they talked about Tiffany Johnston's homicide, uh, William Reese admits that he was at the car wash and that he'd abducted and killed Tiffany.
if only to spare his life. Reese gives investigators his version of what happened that night, nearly 20 years earlier. William Reese said that uh, he and uh, Tiffany had an altercation. He had put her inside the horse trailer that was behind his white dually pickup. And uh, inside the horse trailer, he ended up raping her. And she ended up uh, being killed there. But the scene where her car at didn't show that. Nothing around that scene was disturbed that that led you to believe that there was any altercation there. The first thought goes to my mind was that it was quick and violent, and there wasn't time for any struggle, or she knew the person and just got in the car with them and talked to them. After admitting to killing Tiffany, Reese also says he knows exactly what happened to missing women Jessica Kane and Kelly Cox. After years of delays, his trial begins. The jury came back with a guilty verdict. William Reese was convicted of first-degree murder and kidnapping. Justice was reached for Tiffany, and her family knew it as well.